Well, hello there. We're at it again here on Strategies for Living. I'm marriage and family therapist David McMillan, and I'm delighted that you've tuned in and joined us as we're at it again because, uh, you know, Strategies for Living is all about helping us live healthier, happier, more peaceful lives in our bodies, in our minds, in our spirits, in our relationships. And uh, we do that by engaging in important conversations with folks we like to call life strategists. And our life strategist today herself is at it again. <laughs> <laughs> she is Judy Christie. She is one of my very favorite people Thanks. to have on the program. Judy, welcome to Strategies Thanks. for Living. We could introduce you, but it would take half the show. Let's see. Former editor of the Shreveport Times right. for 152 years. Right, twice. Twice. 75 oh, that's right. years and then and 77 then, yeah. years. Yeah. <laughs> but more recently, uh, you, you ran away from the Times the second time mm -hmm. and decided, I'm going to write that book. Uh -huh. And you've written and you've written and you've written. And now, brand new book out in a long series of books that you've, uh, well, not series, but yeah. mm -hmm. you've had multiple series. Uh, newest book, Magnolia Market, and uh, a trumpet and vine novel. Wow, can't wait to talk to you about oh, this. Oh, great. I welcome look forward back to, to it. Welcome back Thanks to Strategies. Thanks for having me. I'm happy to be here, and uh, I, I love talking about strategies for life because, as you know, I think people ought to enjoy life more. Well, your first books, Hurry Less, Hurry less Worry Less, less. Yep. and they are, they've continued to uh, be great sellers. There's a, a series of them. I have seven nonfiction books. Can you believe that? No, I and can't. Eight and eight novels. Wow, it just gets. Do I look old? It, it just no. <laughs> you look. You, I was going to ask you how in the world you've done all of this and still looking like you look, huh? Well, um, as you know, it takes stepping back regularly, looking at your priorities, figuring out what you want to do, what you're called to do, yeah. what gives you energy. You know, do you yeah. know the things that really? Uh, Keep you excited and what you builds passionate. energy yeah. into you yeah and 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 what I find with myself and I have a consulting business and I, I work some with businesses churches nonprofits and a lot of people do things that drain their energy oh yeah and they just got, and, and that's fine because life drains our energy but what hard. they don't do is they don't put energy Refill back their tank. into themselves mm -hmm. yes that's right and so you know I, I really encourage people to step back regularly and think about hey what is it that gives me energy for me making up stories gives me energy uh, there it's you go fun. well the newest has got to give you a lot of energy you're writing about those doggone broussards and the IAs yep. in Magnolia Market, right? That's right. Yeah, this was fun. You know, when you when you write novels, you create these worlds, you make up people and you can get them to do anything you want them to do, and sometimes they sort of surprise you when you're writing. Yeah, yeah. And like Avery. Avery Broussard yeah. is your uh, is your main character. She's here. my protagonist. Yeah, and this uh, she's a woman who is um, in the middle of a change, and you know you're all about fresh starts, right? Absolutely. But as you know, and you're, I'm sure some of your clients have told you that. Fresh starts aren't always what you they're think they're going to be. Well, not only my clients, Judy, but in my own life. I mean, they're, they're not always what they're cracked up Right. To be, so you know. that's what happens with Avery. She's all set for this big change in, in her life, and she's going to pursue her dream, and all of a sudden it all crashes down, and she has to start rebuilding. And I she love, loses her husband. Yeah, right? he's she, he's a Broussard. Right, and, her husband. Um, he he goes off and dies. He first leaves her and then dies, and um, yeah, she. So she then she loses the business that she had hoped to buy, and she finds that was her in-laws' business actually yeah, that right. she helped uh, mm -hmm. to resurrect yep. in Samford, Louisiana. Yeah, that's a fictional town, and it's named for the street where I grew up in Shreveport. Samford, oh, Samford right. Avenue. Yeah, right. So I love naming things. That's one of the great fun things about writing. Yeah. So she. Um, what I like about uh, Magnolia Market is it's about people who wind up helping each other sort of by accident. And I think in, in our lives, we have to help each other. T.J. Aye uh -huh. uh, has known the Broussards for a long time. This, 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 uh, he works for the Broussards, right? Right. Uh, kind uh -huh. of a Manuel labor kind of yeah. guy. Well, yeah, he's, contract a, he's labor a little bit, uh, he's a handyman and he yeah. does some work for them. He, uh, he also has a company, a, a construction company, but he does some work for them. Yeah. So we, we get all in the thick of things without giving away too much mm -hmm. 
uh, what the, the, I'm assuming the market, uh, Magnolia Market, mm -hmm. uh, from the cover. Great cover, by the way. Oh, thank you. The publisher did that. This is published by uh, Harper Collins Christian Publishing, and um, I, my agent sold uh, this to them. And so there are two in the series so far. And Sweet that's the Olive. trumpet and the uh -huh. vine. But it's an novels. intersection, yeah. yeah. And uh, it's it's an intersection, and it's what's on the corners. And it was inspired by the intersection of Line Avenue and Kings Highway in Shreveport. Really? Although I've remade it all, so you won't really recognize it. Right. Right. Uh, well, let's see, Line Avenue and Kings Highway. That's where so Bird High School Bird is. Bird High School, and we've got the bakery there, yep. and we've got Walgreens, all that kind and, of stuff. And uh, the church. Church, And yep. then the service station, yep. which in my mind became the market. The market, and okay. So. That became Magnolia Market. Uh-huh. All right, so uh, when things don't work out, uh, she starts Magnolia Market. What What is Magnolia Market? Well, she takes Market? over this uh, rundown store just to help out an old cu a couple that's in trouble. Mm -hmm. And um, actually, the novel, she at the, near the beginning of the novel, she has a fender bender in the, in the parking lot of the market and runs into the front of it. So she feels an obligation to these folks. To help these folks. Yeah, and then they have a series of setbacks. And... She uh, meets TJ, who's the love interest. Almost all of my novels, while they're not romance novels, they are, I think every novel I've written has a romantic thread. I think love at its core is what gets us going and um, keeps us going. Yeah, so yeah. She, talk about build energy into us. Yeah, that's right, right. good relationships. And so she's, uh, she, uh, TJ appeared in the other, uh, my first novel, but Avery did not. One thing to mention, in if you're if our um, viewers read a lot, they know that series are very popular. Yes. But there are two different kinds of series, and I, I realize this, David, that I didn't. I, I don't think I've set this up well on my blog and so forth. But one is a series where you have the same protagonist. That's my green novels, Gone to Green. There are five right. of those, and those are all first person. And there is a big city journalist who runs a little town newspaper. Mm -hmm. And they're all from her perspective. But the, another kind of series is where you just have a world, a story world, mm -hmm. and but you have people who come and go. The characters come in and out, but the right. world stays the same. And so in this one, you'll see some of, in, in Magnolia Market, you'll see some of the characters you met in Sweet Olive, the first novel. But these are all folks they're from stand, Sanford. Right, yeah. but they're standalone novels. You don't have to read them in order, and right. you'll just recognize some of the people. It's not unlike a television show, really, where you have different yeah. things going yeah. on. And you like to follow the, 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 either the characters or you like to follow the place. Yeah, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, you, 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 we're going to date ourselves when I say this. I read Peyton Place. You yeah. Remember, yeah. remember Peyton Place we all tuned into? I think for a little while it was even on two nights a week. Yeah, yeah. it was big when I was uh, younger. Yeah. And, uh, um, of course, I loved some of those old soap operas that were on at night. Um, oh, yeah. Like uh, Knott's Landing. Do you remember some of those where you follow the family? A family and you like get all, Dallas. Right, and, all right. wrapped up in their right. lives. Did you know from a, a, a young age that you were destined to write, whether it be as you did in the new, you've been successful in the newspaper business, very successful now in writing both fiction and nonfiction? Did you know? Did well, you know you I always to loved words. I, I was always um, what I consider, my, I consider myself a word nerd. Are you a wordsmith? Yes, yes, I am. Um, I'm a good editor, and of course, I was the editor of the newspaper. And but I love uh, writing. I write. I've kept a journal since I was 11, and I still have every one of them. Wow. And I write letters. I still write snail mail letters. Um, I mailed two letters this morning, and so good for you. I wanted That's to write. That's a lost art. Yeah, it really it's is. Becoming a lost art. I really enjoy that, and um, I wanted to write a novel, but I kept putting it off. Novels are hard, and they take some time. And and um, when I turned 50, I wrote my first one, and so I'll be 58 here in a couple of months. And I'd say the last eight years have been pretty productive yeah, in the writing have. world for Judy Christie. They have. It's been fun. So yeah, I think I knew, and I would encourage anybody who is interested in writing to sit down and write. You don't have to have a computer. You don't have to know anything special but if you just start right putting your thoughts on paper it's very powerful and very magic it really yeah. is it yeah. can help you sort out things it's fun to imagine things i i would hope that um, for example here on the bipsy campus that some people 
might say, hey, I want to write a novel. I want to yeah. give it a try because yeah. I wish I'd started younger, frankly. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. How many of us say, I, I got a book inside of me. Right. One day, we say it in different ways. One of these days, right. I'm going to write a book. You've been saying to me as we've visited through the years, okay, when, David? I know, I want yeah. you to write a book. There are so many opportunities now for people to write, both fiction and nonfiction. The wor yeah, the publishing world. And I, when we come back from our break, I want to get into that because okay. you mentioned the Times, and you have recently started writing a column yeah, I write a weekly a book weekly column. Book column mm -hmm. for the Shreveport Times. I do, and I love it. I, I find it, I find it very addictive so far. Good, Judy thank you. Christie. Glad so to hear that. I want to talk a little bit about that uh, when we come back? And uh, you know, is is it hard to do what you do? Is it does it take a lot of discipline? Oh yes. To to mm -hmm. do this. On it really. I wish basis? I wish I could say it was easy, but it's not. It's it's challenging. Yeah, yeah. What's the hardest thing? Is is the hardest thing sitting down and a daily discipline of writing and not being distracted by uh, Facebook and Twitter and so many things. Texts from my friends and uh, looking at email and going down the rabbit hole of oh I'm going to do this research and then oh oh wait what is that you know Lands End's having a sale you know that kind of thing. And if you weren't busy enough, right? You've oh, added yeah. you've added a. a a deadline for yourself every right. week to get that column to the top. The column, uh, your column comes out on, on Thursdays, Thursdays uh -huh, in, in the arts and entertainment right. section. Yeah, and, and you know this because you write a column. It's amazing how quickly those weeks roll oh, around. Those weeks, oh my goodness, if you really, if you, if you want to lose track of time, we'll just sign up to write a column. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Uh, we're, we're talking to Judy Christie today. She is our life strategist. She is the author, her newest Newest book is Magnolia Market. We are uh, we're going to talk about that and more with Judy Christie as we continue here on Strategies for Living with Judy as our life strategist. We'll be right back. Storms come up fast. Storm protect your family now. We want you to know a safe room or storm shelter can provide the highest protection for your family during tornadoes and other severe windstorms. To learn more about how you can protect your family and property from storms, visit getagameplan.org and click on Mitigation Plan. Louisiana, we can do this. This mitigation message brought to you by the Governor's Office of Homeland Security and Emergency Preparedness. Whether you're enjoying an ATV, all-terrain vehicle, or an ROV, recreational off-highway vehicle, safety can be as simple as ABC. A. Always wear a proper helmet, eye protection, gloves, long sleeves and pants, sturdy boots, and in an ROV, the seat belt. B. Ride sober and only on designated trails. C. Get safety trained through the ATV Safety Institute, atvsafety.org, or the Recreational Off-Highway Vehicle Association, rohva.org. In 1977, in Johannesburg, South Africa, an eight-year-old boy picked up the game of golf from his father. By the age of nine, he was already outplaying him. The odds of this gentle lad winning the Junior World Golf Championships at the age of 14, one in 16 million. The odds of that same boy then making it to the US and European Pro Golf Tours, one in seven million. The odds of the Big Easy winning the Open Championship once and the US Open Championship twice, one in 780 million. The odds of this professional golfer having a child diagnosed with autism, one in 110. Ernie Els encourages you to learn the signs of autism at autismspeaks.org. Early diagnosis can make a lifetime of difference. I never should have clicked on that link. It, it promised to unlock the secret of male enhancement, but mm, it didn't. All it did was brag to my entire friend list that I had found a cure for the average male and that they should try it too. You know, once you spam your mom with a message telling her to increase the size of her manhood, family dinners have been a little weird. Bossier Parish Community College, the fastest growing community college in the nation. Wonder why? The Division of Technology, Engineering and Mathematics at Bossier Parish Community College provide cutting edge technology to students, along with national certifications that allow them to be competitive in today's job market. 
Uh, the main reason I decided to come to Bossier Parish Community College was when I looked at the networking program, it was the best in the area. Bossier Parish Community College. Check us out. You'll understand why. Welcome back. Welcome back into Strategies for Living. I'm marriage and family therapist David McMillan. You are obviously watching us here on Strategies for Living today, but don't forget you can listen to us. Strategies for Living started as a radio program, Judy Christie, um, 100 years ago, 20 some odd years ago on oh, News Radio wow. 710 Keel. It's still there. Sunday mornings, 9.05 to 10. You can also find us at www.strategiesforliving.com and our column in the Shreveport Times, Lanyap section on Fridays. Judy Christie is our life strategist today and we're talking about all things books today. Her newest book, Magnolia Market, you gotta get this book. It's, you can't put it down uh, between those Broussards and the uh, IAs and Samford, Louisiana you'll fall in love with it. Thank you. And, uh, you know, so go, go get Magnolia Market. If you like nonfiction, go get, you know, the holidays are coming up. Hurry less, worry yeah, hurry less. Hurry less, worry less at yeah. Christmas is the best seller of those. And that's because most people, as you know, go a little crazy at Christmas. We, we need do. to slow do. it down a little bit. And then there's, of course, your ever popular Go For Green. Yeah, right? the Green series set in another fictional Louisiana town. All of my novels are set in fictional Louisiana towns. And actually in December, I'm re-releasing my only young adult novel, which is called Reef, A Girl, mm -hmm. and it's about a girl who is really inspiring, I think, and kind of related to what we're talking about. Her mother dies, and she wants to graduate from high school, and she's only 16, and she lives in a junkyard until she can graduate. Wow. And so that book is re-releasing in December. I'm really excited about it. I got a new cover for it. And Excellent. Yeah. I, you know, it's just, I love the fact of the creativity involved. And, and uh, But I, I want to talk a little bit about, you're a book lover. And your I column, love books. Your column is book lovers. And we were visiting a bit during the break. You and I are in some ways dying breeds. You know, our bookstores are disappearing on us. And yet, you know, I'm not so sure that the big corporations have it right because look what's happened. Um, you know, look what's happened in our market um, with all due respect to the companies like Barnes and Noble, uh, formerly Borders, mm -hmm. which is now no more. But look at what's happened. The, uh, uh, the used booksellers. Oh, yeah. Uh, Books a Million closed, but then they opened up a Second new... Second and Charles. Second and Charles. And the Thrifty uh, Peanut the is thrifty just peanut flourishing in Bossier and Shreveport. And moved into a brand new location mm -hmm. in, in Shreveport. So I'm not sure that it's disappearing as quickly as maybe the prognosticators want us to believe. Here. I think there is a hunger for stories. Mm -hmm. And I, I believe that people love that their lives are shaped by stories. I think we're shaped by the stories we tell. Yeah. And I think that um, people love to read stories and immerse themselves. And you know, there's, of course, you're the expert on the brain, but there, there's research that suggests- An expert what, is a drip under pressure, so I'm not <laughs> sure I'm an expert. Well, you know, you, you, uh, there's research that suggests when you read fiction, that your mind goes there. Yes. You know, you really have an emotional response yeah. to a good book. After you can and, lose yourself. And, and so what I see is there's um, the, the digital e-reading world is continues to grow steadily, but it, it, it may be plateauing a little bit. Mm -hmm. But people still read a lot of paper books. I mean, even though uh, the, what we consider the real book, you right. know, which some people read the e-version, but... Uh, I just like the idea of, uh, of having um, the real thing in mind. You were telling a story about your one of your grandchildren, your granddaughter. Yeah, she's an avid reader. She's 13. And, and she reads on the e-reader, but then she wants her She copy has a little library book. in her room. And oh, so wow. when uh, she's here, we go we go to Thrifty Peanut and look for books. And um, we she likes to own a copy. It's funny. I like to own books. And it's hard because if you're a book lover, they'll take over your house. So I do try to recycle them They've every now and then. They've taken over my house and, and my... Uh, Office, office too. Yeah. yeah, and uh, and so, but with as far as a print goes, like uh, for example, the newspaper. Even though more and more people read digital, I am still amazed at the reach of the newspaper. I am too. It's uh, not a week that goes by, and I bet this for you too, 
uh, that I'm not someplace that somebody doesn't come up to me. It ha I ha happened Saturday morning. Uh, you know, guy comes up, uh, Suzanne, my wife Suzanne and I were at a little event uh, that we were part of with our business and guy comes up that I don't know, says, I read your column every week, enjoy mm -hmm. it. I, I love that, but what it underscores for me is, again, let's not be too quick to uh, uh, sound the the the, uh, the the knoll of the end of print. I, I would yeah. agree, and I tell you though, um, communities need their local newspapers. Yes, yes. And they do. whether it's a small paper, a larger corporate-owned paper, because we need journalists look. And I'm not. I don't really consider myself a journalist anymore. I'm a former journalist, I guess. But I love. Uh, news and information you and we need the that. Yes. Yeah, and if, if we don't have somebody looking out for in our community for how our tax dollars are spent or what um, what public servants are doing or not doing, then I think we lose something. Absolutely. And so the newspaper still has a lot of reach and um, it'll be interesting I think to see how it all shakes out ultimately. What are you doing with this, you're in the ACE section mm -hmm, on, on Thursdays, Thursdays in the Shreveport Times, what are you doing with this book lovers column? What do you hope to accomplish? Well what I try to do and I would encourage any of our viewers who have uh, an idea they can just email me. My website is www.judychristie.com and it tells you very clearly how to get in touch with me. I, um, I like to just write about books and I write about places where I go for books like these new stores that open. I write about book sales at local libraries or yes. Centenary. I, find out, I found out about some of those from you and your column. Good, well good. And then I just love hearing from books, people about books. You know what's interesting, David? Books really unite us. We're in this very divided world yeah. where everybody argues about everything. Yeah. And even if we're arguing about a book and people will get going in my email, you know, oh, but what about this book that somebody loved and I didn't like it? Um, but well, even if they're arguing about books, they're, it, it's in a very congenial way. I yeah. love it. Yeah. it. It really, there's yeah. a, an energy to book lovers and we have a lot of them in our community. There are a lot of book clubs, yes. and I, I've been just amazed at the diversity of book clubs and people who get together and talk about books. The, the other hopeful thing, you know, on the radio program, I, I've talked to a lot of authors and more and more self-published authors. Mm -hmm. um, also, they tell me in the publishing world that the young adult, the young adult, you mentioned your young adult novel, uh -huh. the young adult genre mm -hmm. is, is really oh, one huge. of those uh, areas that is keeping the publishing world afloat. It is huge. I mean, novels, uh, John Green is one of the examples, uh, The Fault in Our Stars, his novel that became a uh, movie, and he has a, several other books out. Uh, there are lots of really fine YA writers. In fact, there's one from our community, uh, Corey Whaley. He's a former teacher at Uri Drive Middle School. Have to have, to have Corey on strategies. Oh, for he's wonderful. Yeah. If you can uh, grab him, he's um, he has just been a, named a finalist for the National Book Award for his YA novel Noggin. Wow. So wow, lots to be excited about. Okay, if people want to get in touch with you. JudyChristie.com. Right, and that's uh, J U D Y C H R I S T I E. You gonna keep writing? Oh, sure, yeah. I'm working on another novel right now. Um, I want to write more, frankly. I really enjoy it, and I hear from readers, and I'm, I've been blessed with good reviews at a, from Publishers Weekly and Library Journal and uh, that group of folks. And um, yeah, I definitely plan to keep writing. Can we? Can we find all of your books on judychristie.com? Well, you can find information about them. Um, you can buy them at your favorite bookseller, Amazon. You can get them for your Nook. You can buy them at Barnes & Noble. And I do really appreciate Absolutely. having a local bookstore. Uh, Barnes & Noble, great supporter for local authors. Um, almost anywhere you like to get books. Well, Judy Christie, keep on, do, me, do all of us a favor. Keep on writing. Thank you so Keep much, Keep on doing David. your column. Thursdays in the A section of the Shreveport Times, judychristie.com. Judy, you're, all, it, you're always welcome here at Strategies for Living. Well, thanks. I love being here, and I appreciate your encouragement. 
Folks, uh, we appreciate you. If uh, you enjoyed our conversation today with Judy Christie, we'll know we do conversations like this each and every time we do Strategies for Living. So come back and join us and spread the word. That's the way we grow here on Strategies for Living and strategiesforliving.com. If today were the last day of your life, you only had one more phone call to make, who would you call? What would you say? And why are you waiting? Make the call. For Judy Christie, I'm marriage and family therapist Dave McMillan. See you next time here on Strategies for Living.